Hey guys, we're here at BMP Studio in Tampa, and today we're gonna make the robot work with their LED wall. Let's go plug it in. Oh, hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're talking about integrating motion control with virtual production, and more specifically, ICVFX, which stands for in-camera visual effects. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into what virtual production or ICVFX are, as there's already so many incredible YouTube videos out there, and I'm pretty sure you guys are more interested in learning about how MoCo fits into the equation, so we're gonna stay focused on that. With ICVFX, the goal is to film real practical elements and computer-generated elements in real time with a real camera. The trick is to render and project the virtual environment onto a background or an LED wall, and in order for it to look and feel convincing, the perspectives must line up as close as possible. This means that we need to know both the camera's position and orientation as it relates to the surface that we're projecting the backgrounds onto. ICVFX Studios use tracking systems to pinpoint the real camera's location and orientation. It sends that data to the virtual world so that the background can be rendered and projected from the correct perspective. The only problem with this is that there will always be inherent latency as the tracking system can't predict the future and it doesn't know where you're planning to move the camera. It can only tell the computer where the camera is after it locates it. MoCo solves this problem because it already knows where the camera is and where it will be since it's literally just running a program that you get to design. Uh, since I'm using Push MoCo and the software doesn't know where I'm going to be moving the camera because it can't predict the future and it doesn't know what I'm going to do, you're going to see there's a little bit of latency. So I move the camera, the virtual camera moves behind this one. Uh, this is what happens with the majority of tracking solutions, but once you've programmed the move and you're running the move, you can send a delay to the physical robot uh, to account for any latency and make sure that they're nice and dialed. A fun way to dial in your latency is to program a fast pan and observe which camera moves first. If the real camera moves first, add a delay to the robot. If the virtual camera moves first, reduce the delay to the robot. And repeat this process until you have everything dialed. So I'll just open up my miscellaneous setups. We'll start with 15 ticks, just to show you what it looks like with an extreme delay. We'll run the move. And as you can see, the virtual camera moved first, completed the full move, and then the real camera caught up to it. So we'll just reduce the delay. We'll go back to two ticks, which seems to be pretty good for this system. We'll back around the move. And as you can see, it's keeping up nicely and they're pretty dialed. So. That's it. At this point, you might be wondering how to line up the perspective of the real camera and the virtual camera. Flare knows where the camera is in relation to its own zero point, but it has no idea where the camera is in relation to the stage's zero point. We call this step making them relative. The easiest way that I've found to make the stage relative with the robot is to find something that has nice perspective lines like this and line it up to where it's touching the LED wall in the real world, and then extend it with a similar shape behind the mesh inside of Unreal Engine into the virtual world. Pilot the camera around to observe the object from many different angles, and move the virtual camera around until the perspectives line up properly. It gets even better. Since the camera path is already programmed, it can be sent to post teams as well if there's any cleanup work that needs to be done. If you have an opportunity to record the camera data on set, it's definitely a good idea to do that, as the camera will already be relative to the stage and the scene, so I would highly recommend taking the extra time to record and make any notes if you're able to. Don't stress though, because any project file can be opened in Flare at any point in time, and all the camera data can be exported in a multitude of different ways for various 3D programs. The main takeaway here is that motion control robotics and ICVFX studios were basically made for each other. This combination of technology and innovation really takes things to the next level, and honestly, it's just super fun. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks again for tuning into MRMC Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave any questions or comments down below, and hit me up on Instagram if you'd like to connect. Until next time, peace.